The ranch is heading to Las Vegas for the National Finals Rodeo. Sound of Texas 95.9, The Ranch. Cole Sheriff from Last Call here, hanging out with Shane Smith from Shane Smith and the Saints. Man, thanks for giving us some of your time. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm glad. I'm sorry it took us a second to get done with sound check. Oh, we're well, here. We're that's made. the way it goes, man. Yeah. But everything's unpredictable in Vegas. Yeah. We're at Dolby Live where Shane is opening, supporting for Cody Jinks tonight. That is super exciting. Yeah. And you just announced some more shows with him next year with Tanner Usray. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do uh, several. I don't remember which all cities it is, but I know uh, a good amount of them are up in the northeast, I'm pretty sure. Like, yes, I sir. think we're doing New York with him and uh, or maybe Jersey. Um, anyways, a g- couple shows up there for sure, and, and it's going to be a good time. We just played with him at Bourbon and Beyond, and it's so funny because I hadn't hung with him since, like, 2000. I bet it was, like, 2016 or something. And we both were, we both bands had an off day, and we happened to be driving through Amarillo at the same night on a Tuesday. And I'll never forget, we like pull up to Hoots Pub in Amarillo, and we were just gonna like get some drinks or whatever, and then, and then keep moving. You know, I think we we're on our way to Colorado or something. And and they were in an RV at the time, and we were in a just a terrible old van at the time. But anyways, we just like all hung out had a blast together and then <laughs> moved moved along and then it's like ever since then we've done festivals together all this stuff but we're never like we're, we're on different stages or whatever right. so i hadn't hung with him and then all of a sudden i saw him it's like fast forward like i don't know what felt like eight years or seven years or something and saw him at bourbon and beyond i was like what's up <laughs> and uh he's such a nice guy yeah I, I'm, and i told him i was like we let's we need to tour together again. You know, it's been too long, and then sure enough, we had some dates, so well, that's <laughs> it super worked out. That's but. awesome. Well, it's been a huge year for y'all, man. You put yeah. out uh, a brand new record, mm-hmm. a live at Red Rocks album. You had a, a, new, a brand new baby. Yeah. How amazing is that? Yeah, man? it's our first. It's our first baby. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, man. What's it like being on the road with a newborn? I mean, he's only, you know, a week shy of six months old right now, right. and or yeah six months old right now and uh and so it's a huge learning curve but um you know we ended up three months ago or so uh i uh bought a second bus Mm -hmm. so that they could be on the road with us uh he and my wife and 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 uh also just so that we could expand our our production and like you know pack a lighting rig and all that stuff get some more bunks and just try to like oh you know just try to like reinvest back into the band and to the the business and and it's been fantastic and that's helped so much you know but even in november we were gone like the whole month of november and we went over to the uk to do some shows with the man kaleo randomly in the middle of that and then um but there was about a two-week gap where i didn't get to see him and i was like oh my gosh this is brutal like i can't imagine i can't imagine like being deployed like in the military or something with a newborn i can't even fathom it because like you know even in two weeks that kid will be doing something totally different than they were doing before, you know, and you it's, no it idea. just, it trips you out. I mean, it's really, it's like super depressing, you right, know, whenever right. you realize it. And, but anyways, that, fortunately that's the longest I've had to go since he's been born right. uh, from seeing him. So, well, that's a blessing. It's been great. To get him on the road and oh, your wife yeah. as well. Traveling with the family, it makes yeah. things easier. Yeah. hundred percent. I got a question for you. You said you're in the UK mm-hmm. and you were also in Scotland. Yeah. Which city parties harder? Or which is it Scotland or is it Vegas when you're doing shows out there? Who oh, who man. goes harder? Scotland is lit up. I mean, <laughs> sure. Like Scotland is definitely lit up. Um, I think it just depends, but I would say maybe Scotland for sure. And we did a we headlined there. What was it, Eric? Like a year ago when we were in Scotland or. Or no, it's back in May. I have no clue. What, <laughs> like my sense of time is just so off right now. Right. So back in May, we were over there again and played our own headline there, and it was lit. It was a sweaty, just you know, high energy show. And so, yeah, they get lit up for sure over there. Right. Well, y'all have absolutely put it in high gear in the past five years, especially since the fire. Yeah. Yeah. The bus fire was kind of a turning point in y'all's career, wasn't it? Would would you say? Yeah, to me, it was like a rock bottom. It right. Was, it was like it, it was like we couldn't go any lower than that. And right. So there was only one way 
to go from there and it was either quit and stop doing this or or take it it takes a turn and and fortunately it it took a turn and right there were just these little like breadcrumbs that we started getting out of that and it just you know i'll never forget it was like uh, we went and played a show obviously so we lost for people that don't know this or listen to this we had a bus fire in november of 2019 where we were on our way to lubbock we were driving to coleman texas of all places and uh like probably five miles north of coleman so truly middle of nowhere and um and we had an engine fire and it it you know the whole bus burned up all of our gear our trailer everything burned up and so we lost everything and um anyways uh i'll never forget we ended up we so we made the show happen that night we still made phone calls got a u-haul trailer got a borrowed uh, rv borrowed gear whatever made it to lubbock at midnight all these people had heard what had happened and it was our biggest show we had had up to that point in lubbock and um anyways and it was just special the fact that it worked out but uh we ended up making that show happen then oklahoma city the next night and then uh wichita kansas with co and and those guys co wetzel and uh and we had to go up to uh, steamboat music fest uh, that following month or so um for for uh to play a show there and then we had a show in denver and i and co was moving into a second bus at that time and he let us borrow that second bus just to get us up there and back it's so when we played our show in Denver, it was at Gothic Theater, and it was like mm-hmm. sold out on like a right. Wednesday or Thursday night. So that was, it was pretty that's awesome amazing. for us yeah. at the time. And that's like dead of winter when nobody's really, right. you know, doing much touring through Denver. And anyways, I told my buddy Danny Sachs, who works for AEG, who's the big promoter out out there in the Rocky Mountains. Um, I just ta- I, he was like, "Hey, how are you doing? I can't believe y'all made the show happen." And I was like. Yeah, well, you know, I think this is it. Like, I think we're going to be done after this month. I'm going to probably throw in the towel on it. And I was like, I just don't see how it's possible that we're going to bounce back from Mm -hmm. this because we already were dealing with other things on our end. Um, We had, like, an IRS audit that was like, you know, I didn't have any of my ducks in in order, you know. And and, uh, there was just all this bad stuff that happened. And and, – Anyways, he was just like, well, what do you need? Like, no, don't quit. Like, you can't quit, you know? And, um, and I've told him we need new management. We need new agents. We need new this, that. I said, but honestly, I don't need, even with that, I have no clue how this is going to happen. So the only way this is going to happen is if we get an entirely new team that is so well connected that could just start making things happen for us. Because we were in a situation where nothing against our team at the time, but it's like, every dollar we had to make we were earning it like 4x mm-hmm. you know to get that dollar right. it's not like any good uh, big exposure opportunities were coming up or big tours were coming our way or big venues it was like you had to just earn it at every single day and we just we were just all so worn out right you know from doing it for so long up to that point with no success really i mean we had built up a fan base of like we would sell out whether it was in Seattle or New York or wherever, it would be like a 250 cap room and it would be sold out. Right. But that would be anywhere, whether it's Chicago, Atlanta, uh, what San Diego, whatever, you name it. And normally that, and that was the audience we had built at that time, right. which is still cool for an independent band. Like, of course, but it wasn't feels big like enough. you're not going anywhere. It wasn't big enough for us to do, to, to make a living with everybody. And anyways, it's so, D- that guy Danny Sachs was like, "Give me like, just give me a week, dude. I know this guy. He's a manager in Denver, and that was Brian Schwartz, who's our manager now. And he ended up calling me, and one thing led to another. And before you knew it, it was like, okay, we signed with them, and then we were playing a bar. Um, it was really within, I think it was within that like month or two of working with him. Then all of a sudden, he's like, "Hey, I've got you. I think I'm gonna get you on a show at Red Rocks." And we were like, what? what? <laughs> and and he was like, uh, I managed the band Lucero. They're looking mm-hmm. for a band to open for. And I was like, dude, I'm a huge Lucero fan. I've been a massive Lucero fan for years, and we had never done a show with them. That's awesome. And um, anyways, and so we got to do that, and then we got hit up shortly after that to do like an entire tour with Whiskey Myers of 55 shows. 
I think, around North America. And then um, uh, what else was it? Um, then we were playing a show randomly in Colorado, like nine months later or a year later or something, um, where – we're playing at this basement bar called the belly up, which is actually a mm -hmm. famous rock yep. club in Aspen. And, um, everybody from like foo fighters to anyone has played this right. place coming up. And, uh, we were playing there and, uh, there happened to be a music conference in town the night we were playing. And this room holds like, I don't know, a couple hundred people. And it ended up being slam packed again, dead of winter in December. I think when we played it, mm. And we were actually on our way to NFR, I believe. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I, 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 if I'm not mistaken, and uh, and Jay Williams, Chris Stapleton's mm -hmm. direct agent, was in there in the crowd and emailed us and was like, "Dude, I don't know who y'all are, but like, we gotta, like, I want you guys ASAP if y'all are down." And, and we were like, "Absolutely!" And so then we got with him, and then it, it was just like th this series. Then the ball of events was rolling. Happened. Yeah, and then that. and then like Mile Zero, we could never get on that festival, for example. And then it's something random happened where like Charlie Crockett got sick or backed out. And then all of a sudden we got a call like, Hey, can you fill his spot? And mm -hmm. we we're like, yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, we've been trying to get on this thing with no luck and they're like, okay, cool. And then we get there and I want to say it was like shovels and rope. Uh, maybe this was the next year, but regardless, it was like shovels and rope canceled and we were supposed to open for them. And then Lucinda Williams canceled, and they were opening for her. So then all of a sudden we were headlining, <laughs> and then it went like amazing, like right. it it like went like it, you know, like a headline a headliner should at mile go. Zero. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was like, okay, well y'all are gonna headline now moving forward. And so then we've gotten a headline now, and it's amazing. It was just weird stuff like that just right. started happening. And then Taylor Sheridan left, calls. Yeah, and then yeah. Taylor Sheridan like throws us in Yellowstone, and then. Landman now. Us in, yeah, the Landman deal. Um, he's been, dude, Taylor Sheridan and Avon, the music supervisor, those two people have been just so incredible for us. And and um, it, it's just a lot of really cool stuff finally started coming our way. And I'm sorry to, like, ramble on it. Oh, I just, you're all right, man. It's almost, like, better just to, like, go through it, though, because that's kind of the series of events. We that, love a good road story. At yeah, range, well. I, we're blessed that we have you. You know, I can't imagine what we would do if you would have quit it back in 2019. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't that, know what that, I'd be doing. That Norther album. What do you think you would be doing? If you could think, if one thing, if you just. I, probably like some kind of land development or, or, I don't know. I love doing like woodworking stuff too. And like, I like, I don't know, like clear. I, I feel like I would do some kind of land development. Yeah. Like, you know cleaning up ranches or fixing up ranches and, and trying to like that's awesome. sell them or something yeah. or, or that with maybe houses or something but well looks like uh, you don't have to learn a new skill anytime soon yeah yeah for sure that's that's a good thing well shane we appreciate you talking to us man yeah man no thank you guys and good luck tonight shane smith and the saints tonight at dolby live supporting for cody jinx right here in las vegas nevada my name is cole sheriff from last call on 95.9 the ranch <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,